Hey. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Steve Ann Cook. Thank you for joining me, Steve Ann. Thank you, Justin, for having me. Sure. Yeah. My full-time job is as CEO of Mission Bit. We run free coding courses for public school students, and most of the courses are focused on engaging low-income students of color and females into uh, the tech industry as software engineers. And outside of that, I am a local politician. Um, I am currently running for a board of education in San Francisco. Am I the first politician on the show? Absolutely. <laughs> right. we, we love first, you know? <laughs> Yeah, cool. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the school board. Yeah, yeah. I was born and raised in San Francisco. I'm a third generation San Francisco. And I was spent my entire pre-K through 12 education going to San Francisco public schools. The schools that I went to um, are, a lot of those schools are considered, you know, low performing. Um, if you are a parent that is searching for schools and you look at the rankings, the schools that I went to would be like the last schools probably on your list. But um, in those schools, I found a lot of really great educators that believed in me. I don't think I really turned on my emphasis to education until my, uh, until my high school years. And the, the, the teachers that I had really opened up the world for me around what I could achieve through higher education. So coming back to San Francisco, I worked in public schools. My, one, of my, one of my first jobs coming back out of school, out of Williams, was um, as an academic advisor at the high school that I went to. And I had this, uh, I was so excited about the job. And I had these dreams of all the impact that I would make. You know, I was, I was 23, 24. I walk in to meet the students that I'm working with. Um, it's like a hundred kids in a room who are all supposed to be a part of this program that I'm overseeing. And I knew I was going to be meeting them, so I thought about like all the stuff I wanted to say, you know, because this was like the culminating moment. This is when the kid from the neighborhood comes back to uplift and advance the future of all the children, of all the youth, right? I was, my, my Superman moment had arrived. And I start to speak and the kids listen for about two seconds. And they're like, who the hell is this? Yada, yada, yada. And I couldn't keep anybody's attention. Um, it was just, it was uh, a, a really huge um, moment of humility for me because I realized that even though I come from the same place that they did and I had um, a real desire to see their lives improve, um, they didn't necessarily know or care about that until they knew I was invested in them. So it, long, it no longer became about me. You know, it, it became about my ability to connect with them, to understand who they were, what their aspirations were, um, you know, the people that they trusted to build that trust with them, with those young people. Because until that happened, um, you know, anything that I said wouldn't be of any significance. But I also saw all of the larger barriers that affected teachers as they were trying to do the work um, and the barriers that are affecting families and the lack of resources. And so as I'm sort of toiling away, um, trying to improve things, it's really hard to ignore the larger systemic barriers that perpetuate low achievement, generational poverty. I wanted to put myself in a position to address those larger systemic issues. So when I considered what pathways would get me to that, um, the Board of Education seemed like and is one of the most effective ways to, to create policies that have those young people in mind. So that's what initially inspired me to run for school board. It was an incredible, transformative experience. Um, I was, I was 28, I was the youngest candidate in the race. No, I didn't come from a political background. I, I didn't know anything. I mean, it's my, I'm a first time candidate. Um, and so with that came a lot of skepticism within the political community about what I would be able to, to do. Um, but we ended up getting a lot of support. Uh, and 
I lost by less than 1% of the vote. So, um, now we're back. <laughs> now we're back. So, you know, the Board of Education is, is an incredibly important policymaking group that has an impact on the lives of 57,000 young people. That's how many kids attend San Francisco public schools. Now, for voters, Board of Education is not really on their radar. Um, maybe they, I mean, for San Franciscans, they are, we have like a, a, a large concentration of residents that have um, you know, advanced degrees. Uh, we have a large concentration of residents that are, are doing fairly well for themselves. Um, you know, but not a lot of residents with kids. Uh, there was a report that there are more San Franciscans with dogs than children. And the narrative around public education um, is one that discourages a lot of high income earning families from participating. They're like, oh, I don't know where my kid's gonna go. You know, they might go to the worst school in the world, which is the one that I went to, right? I mean, you were a new candidate last time. Do you have a sense of how you're gonna run differently this time? You know, you run hard, you know? You run hard, like when you lose by less than 1% of the vote, um, it's the universe is, is, is begging you to do it. It's like, it's daring you. I dare you to do it again. I dare you. <laughs> you know, like how do you respond to a defeat that close? Could you give us a little sense of what your work is at Mission Bit? Absolutely, absolutely. So at Mission Bit, um, the goal is to expand computer science education to um, really anyone that wants it. Uh, we focus on San Francisco. We started running our, our, our courses in public schools. So we run after school project based coding courses. We have like an intro to a web development course, Ruby, Python, Android, mobile game development. Those courses are taught by uh, college students that are computer science majors. And we have volunteers that come into the courses that are software engineers. There was a report in the San Francisco Chronicle in October of 2015 about wealth disparity along racial lines in San Francisco. And in that article, um, it showcased that white San Franciscans on average make $104,000 a year in San Francisco. That's sort of the average salary. And African-American residents of San Francisco on average make $29,000 a year. So it was the, it's the most stark income difference um, across the Bay Area. So what's happening to address that? Well, we have the international hub of the tech community with the demand for jobs. At the same time, we have an entire community of people that live in the city that with the skills can do the jobs and then also afford to live in the city. So with our public education system and our low income uh, communities, our communities of color, there is a tremendous opportunity to tool the folks we have here for the jobs of today. And so Mission Bid wants to be that platform to get people in the position to then take those jobs and to end poverty, end poverty for, for them through work. When you look at generational poverty, um, and I was, and I know generational poverty because I was in the cycle of it before I got, I went to college. You know, when people are undereducated and they go out into the job market, it's hard for them to find I mean, especially in San Francisco, it's going to be hard for them to have it a, a, a living wage. Now, if they are constantly working or have a low wage work, they can't invest in much in their ch children's education. For someone who's growing up in poverty without access to a lot of resources, have computers and technology and mobile phones become so commoditized that young people can get access to computers and get excited and pursue their destiny? Some tech entrepreneurs are like, forget college, you should pursue your own destiny, drop out of school and get on the internet and, you know, make make your way in the world. Nah, I mean, you know, that's, yeah, people that talk like that um, have more social capital than they realize and they may come into these positions with, um, with more of the tools to, to navigate different um, different settings, for you know, people that people that are living in poverty 
have a lot of skills um, that are appropriate for their condition, like how do I survive? Uh, the, their access to technology is pretty high on the, on the mobile level. Um, you know, they, everyone has a smartphone, but access to home internet and the actual computer, that's much more limited. So they may have to go to the library, right? I have, I have mentees that are in their early 20s um, that, that I got computers for. Um, and, you know, I mean, it was, it was just, it's just so necessary. If, if they want to apply for college, they got to be on a computer. If they want to apply for a job, they got to be on a computer. When you think about how do we best approach early education policy, well, we do it with a jobs policy. We put parents in a position to earn a living wage so they can then make, um, they can then access more resources to invest in their kids. Their kids uh, go to school with all their basic needs met, right? And so we, we're doing things at a, at a two generational level. This is supposed to put parents and future parents um, in a better position to have a successful, meaningful, long-term career. Is Mission Bid a nonprofit? Mission Bid is a 501c3. So if someone's watching this video and they say, man, I think Mission Bid is doing the right thing. I want to help out. What could they do? We can go on missionbid.com and we have a few different ways to get involved. If you want to volunteer in the classroom, uh, you can sign up there. Uh, if you want to donate, there's an option there. If you want to talk to me personally to get to know more about the organization or if you have ideas or if you know young people that want to take the course, they can also register on, online. I want people to feel like they're, they're a part of the Mission Bit community. And so in order to do that, like I, I'm, I'm really accessible to people so they can learn about what we do. Um, so those are the easy ways through, through, through our website. My contact information is on the website. Um, I'm, I'm on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. <laughs> so I'm, I'm easy to get a hold of, you know, I go to Phil's. <laughs>